Howdy to six staters, this is Professor Kaufman. Uh, what ensues will be a quick run through of our coding environment setup. I'll try to take you step by step through some of the aspects of this document as most folks find a video presentation of this uh, is a little bit more interactive uh, to be more useful. Uh, this isn't the only way to develop C programs, but it's the prescribed way for the course. You're free to explore alternatives on your own time and as time permits, we might add a few nuggets about how to set up a local environment for this uh, later on. Windows subsystem for Linux or virtual machines are, are good for that. But an important skill for all CSers to possess is the ability to log in and interact with remote machines. SSH is the most common way to do that. And so we'll leverage that here along with VS Code, one of the more popular editors of the day. Um, so to start out with, uh, I'm just going to zip down to this uh, bit of business down here and talk about some of those uh, preliminary language and so forth uh, later on. Uh, we'll endorse using VS Code uh, as uh, the editor of choice. I've already installed that, but you should follow the link that's presented here uh, and installed on your system of choice, uh, be it Windows or Mac or um, for the true believers, uh, the Linuxes or OpenBSDs and so forth. Um, on Windows, I can punch the little Windows key and type uh, VS and then after a short delay it'll present like here's my option uh, punch enter and this should open up a uh, VS code as the guide indicates uh, the first step to uh, sort of get this editor connected to this remote um, via uh, remote grace machine is to all install an extension uh, there are a bunch of these for remote editing but the one that we found has uh, the most consistent uh, ability to connect uh, is SFTP. Um, there will be a bunch of these on here, but this uh, Natty Z Skunk, uh, not sure exactly what it is. It's fairly popular and has proven in the past semesters uh, to work out reasonably well. Uh, so punch yield install there. I uh, should take just a moment to down the code and set it up, uh, and then we'll work with that a little bit more uh, in a second. Um, in a file browser, and this is where you would you know, double click on files and pictures and so forth, uh, we'll need to create a new folder of some sort. Uh, I'm going to punch open uh, this little thing, which on Windows uh, opens up uh, the, um, the file browser. I think it's still referred to as Windows Explorer or something like that, or File Explorer. Yeah. Uh, but these goes by a number of different names. On Macs, it'll be uh, your Finder. Um, I'm going to put things on uh, the desktop. I've already made a folder called CMSC216 uh, there, uh, but if you need to uh, right click or do whatever you need to do to you know, create a new folder. You can name this whatever you want, but CMSC216 makes sense. Uh, this is where I'd suggest you put most of the course materials in. Um, as a whole, it isn't the folder that we will sync with the remote machine. We'll make a subfolder for that in, in just a moment. Uh, so then within that, then uh, we'll open this thing up and we're going to open this up in VS Code and then work out for the remainder of there. So this brief four way in the file browser is the only time we need to step out of VS Code. Um, VS Code is an interesting like modern editor and so has uh, esoteric shortcuts over here. I don't know them uh, as I've uh, filled my entire memory with uh, Emacs uh, shortcuts instead. Uh, and it just feels so, feel a little dirty slumming it on Windows here right now. Uh, but I do know how to like a point and click here. So I'm gonna come up with the file uh, and open a folder, I believe, uh, but the shortcuts mentioned there even. Uh, I believe this is the VS Code notion of like a workspace. So if there's certain special stuff that's like in that folder by this there. Uh, now, since I'm on the extensions right here, I don't see anything sort of terribly different. But if I bop back over here, you'll see, uh, here's the contents of my empty folder by CMC216. Uh, and I'm gonna populate that now with a new folder. And this is the one that I'll call 216 uh, sync, I, I think. Uh, I think that's the prescription, but I can't exactly remember. We can change it later if you want. But this is the one that um, will mirror things that you can upload and download to Grace. And so it'll be where it's sensible to put project code because uh, you might write some of it here and you have a local copy, but then we'll occasionally want to upload it uh, to run test cases and so forth on it on this remote uh, server machine. 
Okay, I think that's the first few steps that we need to accomplish here. Uh, and now we'll go on to the remote connection part. Now, all modern operating systems, as far as I know, have a terminal of some sort installed. Uh, on Mac OS, it is simply named a terminal or terminal.app. And so if you press something like uh, command space, it'll pull up uh, something that will ask you to look for an application, type terminal in and punch enter. On Windows, uh, they have this little uh, CMD, uh, uh, CMD to exe. Uh, some folks are maybe more acquainted with like PowerShell or something like that, but either of these will work uh, because what we're looking for here is that it supports the SSH command. And as far as I know, this is installed in all modern systems. It used to not be the case, so you'd have to install an external program. Uh, Putty was a common one for Windows, but you don't need that anymore because uh, this is here. You punch SSH and you see something like, oh, this is how you use it. You're good to go. If you see no such command found, uh, then freak out. And after a short time, uh, maybe look around for how do you install SSH on a Windows machine. This should be fun. Um, SSH is short for Secure Shell, and that's to distinguish it uh, from an earlier predecessor, R Shell, uh, which is just Remote Shell. SSH uses encryption so that as your machine, this laptop, uh, talks to a remote machine, uh, it will use encryption to make sure anybody in the middle who's listening only sees gibberish. Uh, and that's generally the protocol that everyone uses these days for all forms of internet communication. Uh, the good old heyday of like the you know early 90s when folks weren't worried about man in the middle attacks and so just transmitted all of their uh, sensitive data in the clear. Uh, those are gone and probably well, we're better for it. And so we have enough other security problems. At any rate, um, the essence of SSH is to type SSH and then to identify yourself uh, via some sort of username says we'll be connecting to a UMD machine. This will be your username uh, or uh, directory ID on UMD systems. Uh, mine is prof K, but yours might be some combination of like, oh, your first name, like uh, Chris uh, Koff or, or something like that. So with uh, maybe a one, two, three, uh, something along those lines. So this is the first part of your um, terp mail uh, email address. Uh, mine's prof K. Uh, the next will be an at symbol, similar to an email address, but this isn't quite like an email address uh, because the at symbol is used to separate the username then from the machine that you're trying to connect to. And the machine that we'll be connecting to is a university level machine for um, computer science courses and a few other uh, departments courses, I guess, called Grace. Uh, and there's a .umd and .edu. If that sort of seems like a web address, uh, that's because it is sort of a web address. In fact, these addresses uh, aren't web addresses properly. They're, I think, somewhere in this uh, uniform resource or universal resource indicator, something like that, I don't know. Uh, but they're addresses then that the SSH protocol will use to connect to a particular machine uh, and attempt to log me in as prof k there. We'll punch enter. Uh, and we'll get a long prompt here. Uh, if you get something like could not connect to the machine, then chances are likely that you didn't type this in wrong. Uh, the password that's prompted for down here uh, is your university level password. So it's the same thing that you use to log into Elm's Canvas, uh, your email or so forth. I will type my super secret password in here. Now you'll notice no characters appear, and this is uh, for security. Uh, as you type in passwords, uh, the nothing will appear here, uh, not even the number of characters that are typed. So it can be a little bit tricky if you screw things up, uh, press backspace a bunch of times. I think I got that right. Uh, but as is the modern protocol, I'll need to uh, do a two-factor authentication using Duo. I prefer a push notification, so I'll punch one, press enter, and in a moment, my phone is gonna ring and say someone's trying to log in, and I know that someone is me, so I'll say okay. Well, if all goes well, uh, you should get a prompt over here. Uh, the prompt over here is Grace 7. Uh, Grace is actually a small cluster of machines, so you could get anywhere from like 3 to 10 or something like that. Maybe it's 2 to 10. I can't remember. And for some reason, 1 is always down, so uh, you probably are not likely to get that. Uh, but if you get something like another prompt for a password, chances are very likely that you uh, punched your password in wrong, even though it might say success uh, logging you in or something like that. Uh, vexing details of IT administration there. But once you're in, you're good. Um, this is a connection then to a remote machine, uh, another computer, uh, otherwise referred to as a server. Um, it's not in the cloud, it's actually on campus someplace in one of the machine rooms here. Um, so <laughs> turns out the cloud is really just a bunch of machine rooms uh, stored someplace, uh, potentially managed by Google or Amazon or Microsoft, something like that. But more traditionally, like, oh, we have a small cluster of uh, servers here uh, that's used for development. 
Um, and as you log in, you'll see a little tilde here. Uh, this is listing the directory that your shell has started in. And everyone will have some sort of a home directory uh, that's uh, present. And uh, to that end, uh, the tilde is a shorthand for that. It's like wherever your home directory is. Uh, so if we buzz back over to the instructions uh, and look around like we've done all this stuff. Uh, the dash X part here is optional. Um, you don't need uh, to do it uh, these days uh, because we won't be using the X communication um, by, by server for that. And I might actually just eliminate that over there. And you notice I did it fine without, 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 without doing that and it doesn't show up in the example uh, down here. Okay, uh, so bypassing this, we have a few commands to run. Uh, these two are semi-important. Uh, these little, uh, like, what are they, greater than signs? I, I don't know, it's like a right, uh, a caret is what I usually refer to it as. They're meant to represent the prompt, so here is this command here uh, that's to be typed. You know, notice the tilde there, and then my username, prof k. Uh, that's because the command that you're going to run is actually a little script that's in my directory. Uh, and so, let's see, I think uh, I'll try to copy this. I have had limited success with this uh, on uh, Windows stuff. But I know there's like some sort of way over here that maybe if I punch this thing, I can edit and then paste. Yeah, oh, it actually honors Control V, really? That's a change from the last time I used this. Yeah, it doesn't actually honor Control V. <laughs> okay, uh, I will try the GUI version and then uh, slum it to... Um, paste that. Hey, that works. Okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, now, chances are likely this is going to give an error uh, for me because I've already run this script once. Uh, but uh, actually, I, I can uh, undo this. So let's see, let me remove. You know, don't type this part. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, try. Yeah, yes, go ahead. And then I'll run this thing. Okay, so you should see this message. Uh, setup is partially complete on your next login, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, if you just want to continue as is, uh, source this thing here. That's the next command to, to punch in. So I will grab that one as well. Um, after you do this once on this, you know, first time that we're getting set up, you should never need to do this again. Uh, and so you know, don't bother doing these things uh, ever again. Uh, now the effect of these two is uh, just to set your shell, like this thing that's running right here, to have certain settings so it can find a semi-modern compiler. And I'll maybe allude to or demonstrate some errors that are associated with if you fail to do this, like what happens. Uh, but there's no like immediate feedback here. Silence is golden Unix land, so we'll just presume everything is successful. And uh, proceed with uh, the guide over here. Now, the effects of this thing we'll, we'll, we'll sort of examine later, but for now, uh, I'm going to make a directory, a folder, uh, on this remote machine uh, so that I can sync with uh, the local version over there. I can't remember if I've done this already, uh, so I'm going to type a few other commands. ls is a common one to know. It lists what's in your directory. Uh, and you can see, ah, here, there's a 216 sync that's already present there. I'm going to get rid of that one. Be careful of this rm-rf business. Uh, it's how you delete files, and that's irrevocable on Unix systems, uh, of which this is one. Uh, but just to demonstrate for the uh, purposes, I'll type this command, this mcdir, uh, so it's like, uh, you know, which is short for make directory, mcdir uh, 216 sync. It's named identical to the folder that I created locally uh, by intention because these are the two that'll sort of mirror each other over there. Uh, and then if I type ls again, you'll see this 216 is uh, still here, which is good. Uh, the blue ones here, according to my shell coloring, are directories that we can change into. Uh, the red ones are some zip files, I guess. Uh, we'll talk more about zip files later. And the white stuff is like other stuff that the shell isn't really uh, sure about. Chances are you'll have maybe a few files in there, not as many as me, and that's no cause for concern. I've been doing this for a few years, so of course you're going to you know, accumulate a few files in there. In there. Uh, the next thing that uh, we'll want to do then is to change into that directory that was just created. The cd command is handy for this, uh, so do cd and then the name of the folder I want to type in. Uh, now here are a couple of things that are interesting. Um, if I stop typing here, uh, rather than typing out the whole 216 sync thing, uh, stop typing at 21 and press tab, uh, then I'll get some level of completion uh, on this. Uh, in that Unix is old and is mainly meant to sort of interface through the command line, so there are a bunch of conveniences uh, built in. Tab completion is one of them. 
Now, there's several ways to complete uh, this uh, 216. I get filled in the 6 because that's the, obviously going to be there. Everything else uh, that starts with 2 and ends uh, but becomes uh, 6 next. But there's several other possibilities. But I type like dash and then S and then press tab. Uh, that will complete to the only thing that's available, which is this 216 uh, sync directory, that sort of thing. I'll punch enter at this point, uh, but my point in sort of uh, emphasizing that is uh, you'll probably be pressing tab more and more to complete things uh, as certain completable things uh, just make the whole uh, command line experience a lot easier and slicker. Uh, so I'll jab tag a, tab a bunch. Irritatingly, Windows like makes some sound like when it can't complete completely here, but which is vexing, but no matter. Now I'll do an ls, a listing in here, and find that there's nothing in here because it's a fresh folder, uh, completely empty, uh, and that's fine. We'll get some stuff in there uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, importantly now, I need to get the location on the entire file system of exactly where this is at. Uh, so the next step is to type the command pwd, which is to print the location of the working directory, uh, wd is short for that. So pwd, uh, and then over here, you'll get this slash afs glue.umd.au home glue, and then some stuff that will vary from person to person. Uh, I would guess that they subdivide the many, many home directories for the many, many students and other users on this thing uh, by, I guess, the first couple letters. So I've got prof k as my username, so the p and then r subdirectory. Each of these slashes uh, indicates uh, this is a folder someplace, and then this is a subfolder within that, and this is a subfolder within that. The Unix file system always starts with the slash directory, uh, which is up here. Uh, but this entire thing then is the exact location on the file system of this 216 uh, sync folder. And you'll notice it ends with that over there. And we need it because uh, in order to get the VS Code thing we're going to uh, uh, sync up with, uh, we'll need this exact location. We're going to copy and paste it in just a second into a configuration file uh, for VS Code. Okay, so with that done, uh, we'll keep the terminal up and we'll actually use it a little bit later uh, for a few other things. Uh, we will come back over to uh, the uh, VS Code and proceed with some additional setup over there. Uh, so over here, I'm going to tab over to VS Code. Uh, now, I need to get some uh, command palette or some crap like that in here. And uh, being unfamiliar with uh, VS Code, I'm just going to sort of follow directions on there. The Control-Shift-P here is how you fire up a, a command prompt within VS Code. Uh, so command palette, I guess they have a bit of so. Uh, let's see, control shift P, and then it comes up here, and I'll type SFTP, and then the first option that comes up is uh, SFTP. I did a demo run of this, which is probably why it says it's reasonably used. Um, so if I click on that then, and this should be beautiful, uh, it should open a default looking configuration file. Um, now, the intent of this is to use that extension, uh, and what we're going to say is take this folder and synchronize it with the folder that's actually on Grace. So anytime I put uh, something in this folder, uh, I can, with an easy command, get it to upload immediately to Grace, uh, or anytime I want to take the contents of what's on Grace uh, in that 216 sync folder, uh, get into this folder that's on my machine there. Uh, however, to get that set up right, I'll need to configure this file as uh, it sort of dictates out of there. Uh, thankfully, we have a little palette over here is down uh, this stuff right here. Uh, and so this is uh, generally then what you'd copy. Uh, this configuration is in a JavaScript uh, JS uh, language, uh, or maybe JSON uh, more properly, the object. Uh, but all I'm going to do is uh, delete all this stuff and paste uh, this thing over here and then uh, paste a couple things over here. Uh, and this is a nice configuration format because you can see it allows for some nesting and so forth. Uh, the basics are all here, but I'll need to fill in some things that are specific to me. Uh, so grace.umdvu, that's the machine that we just logged into. Uh, we'll use the secure file transfer protocol by SFTP, uh, that's the name of the extension. I'll need to punch in my directory ID, which again is prof k. Uh, and then here's where I'm going to delete this stuff and copy and paste that stuff that's over here in my terminal. Uh, so I'll grab this thing. And I'm just betting that Control C isn't going to work because Control C on Unix terminals actually does something quite different than copying. But I'm betting over here there's a copy which 
the keyboard shortcut is enter. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, anyway, uh, over here though, I should be able to control V and paste that in there. Uh, make sure this reads as yours because uh, if you read, try to read from my directory, my chances are likely like you won't be able to do that because you can't get on to my, by my stuff there. You don't have write permission there. Uh, the rest of the stuff that's on here is defaults. Uh, for instance, as we edit files and save them, then it will upload um, to this remote location. Uh, and under that, I think we can just uh, press Control S. Now, uh, like most modern editors, uh, or sane editors for that matter, uh, VS Code has an indication that what we've done here is only stored in RAM. Temporary memory it hasn't been saved to disk yet. And so you have the little dot up here is an indication of that as I would either select file and then save or use the much more handy keyboard shortcut, control S, you'll see the dot go away. Uh, and that has now sort of uh, an indication that this thing is in sync with the permanent copy that uh, no changes need to be saved. I say that now because uh, there'll be some, you know, various times that that becomes important. Like, why is it that I keep changing this code and I don't see any changes in the test case? Well, maybe you forgot to save it and then it's, you know, when you're recompiling or something like that. All right, uh, come back over to the guide, be over that. Um, we should be good uh, to go here. Uh, the thing is, we don't actually have anything to sync at this point. Uh, and so the easiest way to get this up running is let's create a file locally and then upload it to Grace. Uh, so over here, I'm gonna go into this directory uh, and if I can uh, right click, I will make a new file. And I'll just call this one hello.txt. Uh, this is an optional step for those of there. Uh, hello, Grace. Uh, I'll there. Uh, but it's good to sort of experiment a little bit. So I save that now. Uh, and uh, at this point, uh, let's see, I think I, if I right click here, I can sync the local to remote. This will cause data that's on my current machine to upload to Grace, and we'll be able to see it there. So uh, once I punch this, I'm getting it prompted up here for my uh, Grace UMD password. Uh, let me punch that super secret one in here. Okay, uh, and then this, despite the very bad prompt is the duo prompt to say like, okay, it's two factor. I'm gonna punch one to say that I wanna push notification and uh, my phone is jingling. So I will prove that part. Uh, and then you should see uh, down here, I guess it went by really fast, a, um, a little thing that said, okay, we're uploading all that stuff. And if all is well, uh, and I can't actually guarantee it, if I list here now, oh, I don't see anything. Okay, so something went wrong. Uh, I am gonna pause my recording quick and uh, figure out what went wrong on that. Uh, and then I'll get back to you in just a moment here. Uh, pause this thing here. Okay, that took a ridiculous amount of time, but the error is actually really dumb. Uh, I didn't actually have the load.txt in the 216 sync folder. I need to like drag it up here. And yes, I want to move it. And you notice now it's like just slightly indented and you can see what is up there. Uh, and this now, as I would do a sync to say uh, the remote to local, uh, I think since I already plopped that in there, uh, yep, we'll be okay there. And then, oh, it just disappeared for some reason. Okay, uh, well, let me recreate that here. Like, can I create a new file within this thing? Okay, here's try this hello.txt once, and then hello, Grace. Let's save it this time and try it once more. Uh, sync local to remote. I think we're going okay there. And then if I jump back over here to this thing, there it is. Okay, cool. Uh, a couple other commands that are useful. Uh, listing, that's good. If you want to show the contents of a file within the terminal, the cat, short for concatenate uh, command is useful. Hello.txt uh, reads hello, my, or hello Grace here. Notice it doesn't end with a new line, uh, which is a little bit gross. Uh, so the prompt gets sort of buried up there with it. If I come back and add a new line here, maybe I'll put this down and then save it. Uh, if I, uh, no, the save here, you can see there's a little um, console log of what the SFTP uh, extension is doing. Every time I save now uh, this file, it's going to upload to that remote server and you can see the local remote, I think I uploaded, but if it's uh, cool there. So if I do a listing again, it's still there. And if I cat it out this time, 
uh, you'll see, ah, here's the exclamation mark. Um, now, generally this makes it a little bit easier uh, because in order to um, compile and run code, you'll need a C environment, which Grace is gonna provide, and it's a uniform environment for all of us. But interacting with the terminal and any code here requires some specialized skills, which are extraordinarily useful in the long run to have, but as you're all beginners and just sort of getting into this game, it's nice to be able to edit stuff as it appears to look sort of locally in that way. Um, so a common discipline then is to have a terminal up logged into Grace over here, uh, and then to have a code editor up here. Turns out that there is an integrated terminal within VS Code that you can use if you want. Uh, so it's uh, not here, but, uh, oh crap. There's some way to open it. I think I remember. Oh, no, no, it's okay. There's a, a clicker down here someplace like a terminal. Uh, so I punch that, then this will give me a local terminal. Uh, but I can as well SSH uh, over to Grace and go through that rigmarole as well. Um, if you're uh, so inclined to have like a, a terminal down here in your IDE sort of thing, it's just that locally here, this isn't going to have the C compiler and so forth. Um, now, after a while, you'll probably develop uh, some. Uh, code that's on Grace, I need to get it. So uh, to go in the other direction, um, we want to download code from Grace uh, 2 here. Uh, let's emulate that uh, for just a second uh, by doing the following command. The echo uh, command will print things to the stream. So hi laptop, uh, something like that. Uh, you can see it just prints that message here, but I can redirect that. Oh, uh, quick handy uh, bit. When you're in a terminal, if you press up, this will recall progressively earlier commands uh, for things and pressing down scrolls back through that window. Um, extremely useful to have uh, on hand, particularly if you want to rerun a previous command that's not too far away uh, or modify it as we'll do here. I'll put a little redirection here to hi.txt uh, and I said press enter that doesn't go on the screen anymore instead it goes into a file called hi.txt uh, if I cat that one you should see the message uh, hi laptop out there um, you'll notice the listing of the files that are on grace uh, they include hello.txt and hi.txt but over here I only have hello uh, so I want to synchronize in the other direction this time uh, grab the remote to local, uh, and this will use the cache stuff, and now I got my hi.txt down here. So um, the this completes more or less the initial setup that allows for easy transfer of material uh, back and forth. Um, the next steps uh, that you're likely to go through, uh, and this will start in on Wednesday's discussion session in the first week of classes, um, is to get some of the lab code. Um, you'll have a weekly exercise and that lab code, you can either download it locally or um, you can download it directly to Grace, but it'll create subfolders within this sync directory. Uh, and TAs will take you through the process of editing some of the files that are in there and compiling your first C program. Uh, but that should be sufficient for now uh, to get folks up and running and talking to the Grace server. Anything that you don't want to be synchronized with the Grace server, and that includes things like notes you might have or PowerPoint slides, I guess not PowerPoint slides, just slides like PDFs of them uh, that'll serve you folks. Uh, don't plop down in the sync directory because every time you synchronize, that'll try to upload to Grace and slides don't do you a lot of good there. Instead, just put it in this mainline CMC216 directory, maybe in a certain directory that says like notes or something like that. All right, I'll sign up for now. I look forward to seeing all of you uh, during lecture on Tuesday and on Thursday uh, and happy hacking until then.